Hello everyone. My name is Archdeacon Bill Gray and I'm the priest of the Anglican Parish of Bob Cage in Dunsford and Burnt River. As we approach the second Sunday of Easter, I'm delivering my sermon from home where I have beside me here some religious icons to remind me and reassure me of faith. And over my shoulder I have an abstract portrait of Bob Cajun to remind me of our community in which we minister. The theme of this week's sermon is Doubting Thomas, the story found in the 20th chapter of the Gospel of John beginning at the 19th verse. As I often recall, my middle name is Thomas, which was my mother's surname, uh, which was why I was named Thomas. As I often questioned things when I was young, I was often teased by my family and friends that uh, this name was well applied to me, as I often doubted and questioned things as well. However, I'm reassured by the fact that doubt is not the opposite of faith. It is rather faith's natural companion. Otherwise, faith would be called certainty, which it is not. We sometimes doubt, in this time of pandemic and crisis, whether the mission of the church or the purpose of our lives can survive or be accomplished when we are not able to gather in community and be with others. However, I am reminded by a good friend of mine, Mark Dunwoody, that there are many other examples in our community of major institutions that no longer do business as usual, even before the pandemic began. For example, Airbnb, the largest accommodation provider owns no real estate. Facebook, one of the most popular media owners, creates no content. We supply the content. Netflix, the world's largest movie house, owns no cinemas or theaters. And Uber, one of the world's largest transportation agents and taxi companies owns no taxis. We sometimes wonder, especially when we're alone at home, if we are prepared or equipped for this different way of doing things. We are living in many different ways, even outside of pandemic, which we often feel unprepared, unqualified and which are unprecedented. In this week's Gospel, we find the Apostles in self-isolation, ensuring social distancing from those elements outside that might harm them. They still feel threatened and fearful in the aftermath of the execution of Jesus. Thomas, however, is the exception, of course. He has gone out. We're not sure why. Perhaps he was poorly acclimatizing to isolation and needed a break. Perhaps he went to run some errands for the other apostles. Perhaps he went out to get groceries and supplies. Do you suppose Thomas wore a mask or other protective gear to conceal his identity against his enemies? or that which might harm him, as we do today, except our threat is from an unseen virus. While Thomas was out exploring and assessing the threats outside, something miraculous happened with the rest of the apostles inside. Jesus appeared. Now, upon his return, it is up to Thomas to assess whether this is real. Is this really Jesus, risen from the dead? And he is given the opportunity to examine our Lord's wounds. He touches the holes in his hands and side. And after Thomas is convinced and proclaims, My Lord and my God, Jesus declares, Blessed is he who is not seen, 
and yet believes. It remains hard for us to believe that we can save the world by staying inside. Thomas is said to have had a twin, and metaphorically I sometimes think that his twin is us. Thomas like us, desires to venture outside into, into the pandemic of the aftermath of the death of Jesus. Just like Thomas, it is hard for us to believe that what is really important is what is happening inside, not outside. What is happening inside our homes, inside us? We may feel at times that we are even less qualified for this interior journey. Sometimes the outside is a welcome relief that keeps us from looking too closely within. But in a pandemic, the only place left to look is inside. When we look inside ourselves, what do we see? Empty vessels? Or do we see a rich inner life? And do we see an inner life that is supplied at least in part by God? When we look in the mirror, do we see only ourselves or can we see the reflection of something deeper, more spiritual, perhaps even the face of Jesus? And what does Jesus say to us from that mirror of ourselves? What does Jesus speak out to us from that interior of our lives? Well, for example, I think Jesus would tell us today that our fate does not reside in a virus. He would tell us and remind us that there is life beyond the limits of a contagion. And he would remind us and reassure us that if we choose to stay inside, Jesus will nevertheless find us. This is the miracle we are all facing, that by staying inside, staying still, looking inside, exploring our interior life, keeping safe, in this way we can save the world. And perhaps, in a spiritual way, we can save ourselves. And this is a task we don't need to be qualified for or prepared for. It is a gift that God has given us. We sometimes think in our primitive ways that God sees us from above or from without, but the truth is we are often reminded that God actually sees us from the inside, from the inside of ourselves. Do you still doubt it? So did Thomas, who is our twin, but Jesus forgave Thomas, as he forgave so many others, so many things. Jesus knew full well that doubt is part of our spiritual existence and our spiritual life. He himself in the Garden of Gethsemane questioned his purpose when he asked God that perhaps he could take this cup from him. But he declared, not my will, but your will be done. Jesus forgives us for having doubts. For after all, doubt is the twin of faith.